All right, so today we're going to talk about H2 regions. So do you remember the you know, Roman numerals one, two, three are the um, oxidation states, how many um, electrons they're they're missing. So H1 would be uh, neutral, so zero electrons, and neutral hydrogen. And H2 will be uh, ionized hydrogen. So this is essentially just a, a single proton. And that's it, right? If you have heavier elements, like helium, then you can have helium one, helium two, then you should be able to have helium three, and so on. So, most of the hydrogen in the universe is going to be uh, either in atomic form or as a molecule. And typically stars are going to form from either H1 or molecular hydrogen. So once they form, and you'll have your new star over there. And the ones that are heavy enough, that are, uh, that can radiate into the uh, ultraviolet, then those are going to you know, start their life. And they're going to ionize the whole region um, uh, about them. So this region is not small. So it could be between uh, 10 and 100 parsecs. So 32 to 320 uh, light years. So they're, they're pretty big. And, you know, to a first approximation, this is just going to be um, a sphere. So it's kind of like a bubble uh, of H2 in this H1 region. So the stars that can create this kind of bubble, uh, there will be a, an O or a B star. So the more massive ones, it, the ones that can produce um, radiation of the highest energy. Um, why is that? Why, for example, the sun will not create this bubble? It's not massive enough. Say that again? That is not massive enough. Right. So what do you need? What kind of radiation do you need to ionize hydrogen? Well, it'll be in the um, ultraviolet. It was like about 100 nanometers or so. So the sun. Okay, I was going to answer gamma for some reason. So, well, gamma that'll be too energetic. So it has to be, you know, just just right, uh, because they can only absorb uh, certain certain energies. So, a gamma ray will probably. I mean, 
I assume at some point it will interact, but for the most part, you know, it will just uh, leave. And the radiation that is of lower energy, you know, like visible light or something like that, um, it can interact with the hydrogen, but it's not energetic enough to um, knock off the, um, uh, the electrons. So it only happens with these stars, um, O and, and B. So why do you think that the H2 region will eventually end? Uh, so it will be just like a bubble and H1 you know, will be everywhere around. Well, um, this is moving away in the, the photons um, radially outward. And so the intensity is going to depend on the radius. So um, if you have free protons and electrons and nothing to bother them, they will uh, recombine into hydrogen because it's a lower energy state. So at some point, you're going to reach an equilibrium in which number of um, uh, hydrogen atoms that you are uh, ionizing is the same as the number of atoms that are uh, being, or protons and electrons that are recombining into hydrogen. So you have this region where you essentially have no um, neutral hydrogen, and then you have this recombination surface. And so this is going to look, you know, it's like a, it's a sphere, a bubble. So let's see what else. So H, uh, H1, uh, mutual hydrogen, is opaque to this particular radiation. Right, which means that it's going to absorb it. So also, you know, in that surface, uh, it is going to absorb the energetic uh, photon, uh, but when it recombines, it's not going to go directly to the to the ground state, right? So instead of radiating the same uh, uh, photons of the same wavelength. They're going to be radiating more photons, but of lower uh, wavelengths. So you will not see uh, the uh, that radiation coming out of the sphere. You will see just like a, it's opaque, uh, but but it's also emitting you know these other uh, hydrogen emission lines. So you know if you can imagine it, it will be kind of a colorful um, sphere. So these bubbles are called strong grand. Spheres. Most of the uh, radiation uh, emitted at the surface of the, of the sphere is going to be uh, Lyman, Lyman alpha. which I think you will learn a little bit more about in one of the forum discussions. Okay, so let's consider this uniform medium of uh, neutral hydrogen that has a strong grain sphere inside. The number density is going to be n, so how many particles, um, in this case, hydrogen atoms you have per unit volume. Uh, inside, you know, n is going to, well, we're going to see. It. 
So then we're going to multiply this um, density times uh, psi, which is a function of R. So psi is going to be the fraction of um, uh, neutral hydrogens. So this psi is one outside of the sphere. And inside, you're going to have some dependence on the on the distance from the star. So the the densities of protons and neutrons is going to be. neutrons, uh, electrons. It's going to be one minus psi. Times. And you have one proton and one electron per hydrogen. So over here you have these uh, fraction and density for each one. So this star is going to be emitting photons isotropically in every direction. It's going to be L photons per unit time. It means that the flux is going to be L four pi r squared. And this will be just for a sphere, but we also have a uh, attenuation factor. Tau, which depends on the distance r. So it's a little bit more complicated than your regular um, spherically symmetric uh, flux. And you know, tau, you remember, is the, the optical depth. So it increases as, um, as the distance increases. So this one is a fun functional, right? So tau depends not just not just on tau, but uh, indirectly on uh, on the distance r also. So just a reminder. Uh, this is the optical depth, tau. And in this case, this uh, absorption coefficient 
is going to be n sigma, where sigma is the uh, cross section. So in general, you know, sigma um, is just an absorption cross section. In this case, uh, in particular, is the uh, ionization cross section. It's n sigma. Psi, which is a function of R, dr. Okay, so uh, if you remember this, we saw it before when you combine the a cross section with with a density. We did it for the stars also. You get so this will be n is number per volume, let's say near a cube, and the cross section is uh, meter squared. So this is a length. Right, or one over length, so it's a uh, uh, it's a mean free path. So we saw it before. Absorption in stars. Okay. So the number of Ionizations per volume so you know how many times they interact um, per time. at point R is so the flux is telling you how many photons you get per area per unit time sorry scammers Uh, the cross section is how efficient you know, it is at absorbing, so it's a, uh, the absorption cross section. And this one tells you how many hydrogens uh, you have in there. So if you look at the units of this one, it is, uh, well, this counts per meter cube uh, per time. This one has the time. Okay, so the number of combinations or recombinations of electrons and protons is going to be. Uh, So this was their density. Um, it's going to be proportional to the density of each one. So we can, I don't know if that's, and we aren't assuming anything about the physics. We're just going to say that is uh, proportional to this parameter alpha. So this is uh, recombinations uh, 
number density, uh, protons and uh, electrons. And this one has units of number squared per time. So essentially pairs per time, how many pairs you create per unit time. So you can consider alpha an effectiveness uh, parameter. The units will be volume divided by time. Okay. So then the condition for equilibrium, you are creating as many photons as um, This will be you are destroying as many hydrogen atoms as you are as recombining. Uh, it will be this is equal to this. That means that the flux, which is a function of the radius, is alpha n squared one minus psi squared divided by psi um, n cross section alpha. And we defined uh, L before. It was the constant, you know, with the exponential you know, negative tau. So we can put it over here. It's going to be L over 4 pi r squared, then the exponent. So this means that um, we can move this exponent, which is negative, we can move it over here. It will be exponent positive, exponent of tau. It's going to be equal to um, 4 pi. R squared, and then the alpha n squared and L up here. Sigma. Uh, there was an n over here. We can cancel out that n. And then we have this funny uh, expression over here. Okay, so this is Weinberg three point two point four. So, what is the dependence of these? Um, exponential on, on R. Uh, 
Well, we have the one over R squared over here. Uh, what is this doing? What would be typical values for psi? Like a half, maybe? What's that? Like a half? I guess this is a fraction. Yeah, a half is definitely a valid value. So for most of the, well, for the inside of the sphere, uh, this side is going to be very close to zero, which means that there's going to be almost no uh, neutral hydrogen atoms in there. And this is going to be you know, close to one. But there is going to be some um, radial dependence, as we will see. OK, so on the left-hand side, Take the derivative with respect to R. And this is going to be B tau to the R, D tau to the R, the R. And you know, if you remember, tau is that integral. So if you take the derivative with respect to R, can just essentially cancel uh, that integral. So then this is equal to E tau of R, the derivative with respect to R, because from R zero or R naught to R, um, N uh, sigma, Psi of R dr. So get rid of this part, and we get just the n sigma psi of r. Okay, so this was the right hand side. Now let's Let's do the, sorry, the left hand side. Let's do the right hand side now. We're going to have L sigma or pi alpha n, which is just a constant. And then is the derivative with respect to r, and then the r squared, and that funny thing that we had up here. Um, so that was equal to E uh, negative tau and sigma psi of R. So we can multiply both sides. Um, this one was positive, sorry. By E to the negative uh, tau. And then we can get rid of this one. So now here we have n sigma and psi. And now we have this uh, negative over here. So before we had derived this one, it's equal to 4 pi. 
R squared uh, flux divided by L. So we can put L in there. Um, what will it do to our term? So the L's go away. Uh, the four pi's go away. And we should have this term and this R squared. So I guess that's, oh, and this one's two. We should have them. Where should I put this? Well, I'm gonna do this one. It has the R, um, R squared over here. Those are the flux. And that's it, right? Okay. So we can move the flux and the sigma over here. Keep the R squared. And of oh, the alpha N. We're here too. Okay. And now, since we have the condition for equilibrium, from this one, we get that Funny term is alpha N over sigma plus we have the flux and the sigma and the alpha and the n right here. So we can replace that part. I'm going to rewrite it uh, or just move it a little bit to the left so that we have space. So this is going to be R squared derivative with respect to R of the radius down here it's going to be N sigma So this part. So that's starting to look prettier. That is uh, Weinberg uh, 3.2.5. So this is a differential equation that describes how the fraction of ionized hydrogens 
is going to vary with respect to r, the distance from the star that is producing these, um, this radiation. So this equation um, has these two astrophysical parameters, so the number density uh, and the cross section. But from the uh, boundary condition, you will get that This is R naught. So this is you know, um, where you start observing your phenomenon. Typically, it's going to be the surface of the star. So this is the radius of the star that is producing this radiation. And this is going to be 4 pi um, R naught squared alpha n divided by L sigma. So we have all your other parameters uh, over there. The radius of the, of the star, how efficient the recombination is, the density of your, of your cloud, the luminosity or the photons per second of your star, and the cross section, how effective is the material at absorbing uh, the radiation. So this equation is uh, too complicated to be solved analytically, but there are two approximations that you can make that will allow you to do just that. And they happen to be uh, useful uh, regions that you can uh, explore with this. So, the first one is inside the sphere. You know, in that case, um, as I mentioned, psi of r is approximately zero, it's close to zero. It is not exactly zero. Um, so approximately greater than zero. And so this term over here is approximately equal to one. So if this is the case, then this equation can be simplified, it will be R squared ddr psi r over r squared equals n sigma um, psi oh, this is a function of r So this is um, a differential equation that we can solve. I'm gonna need some space. So I'm gonna rewrite it up here. So if you let y be sigma over r, I mean sigma of r for r squared, then so r squared will be psi of r divided by y. 
So then this becomes the side of R divided by Y uh, derivative with respect to R of Y. And psi over here. Um, yeah. Mm. Oh, I see. So here we have n sigma psi squared r. So we can get rid of this one and this one. So it becomes a single one. And so we can replace that with this. So we get r squared y. Uh, we can move this one over here, so it'll be squared. And this dr, we can move it over here. And so we have our differential equation. y over y squared equals n sigma r squared dr. These two are constants. We can integrate. This one is going to be from r0 to r. This one um, will we also integrate. So integral of this one is going to be minus um, 1 over y plus some constant. And this one is going to be um, r cubed minus r not cubed uh, but by three. Did I get all that right? Mm. Yep. Okay, so now to get these uh, constants, I apply the boundary condition. So what is k, or what is this expression at um, r equals r naught? Oh, I guess um, 1 over y, y was psi over r squared. This is, um, Psi over R squared. Okay, so at this distance we'll get this minus this is zero. So this whole thing is zero. And so K is R naught squared over psi. At R not. Okay, so now we can write um, what well, we solved the differential equation. It's going to be um, minus R squared over psi of R plus the constant. equals n sigma over 3 r cube minus r not cube.
So I can move this one over here. It's negative. Um, this one is negative, so we can make this one positive, this one negative, this one positive. And yeah, this looks um, pretty nice. So if we switch it, so if we do uh, psi of r over r squared, we're going to get r naught squared divided by psi of r naught minus n sigma r cubed minus r naught cubed divided by 3. And to the negative one, since we flip these ones. And this one is uh, Weinberg 3.2.8. So, as I mentioned before, uh, if you multiply the density times the cross-section, you get a mean-free path. So here, that mean-free path is defined as 1 over d. So now we can put d, the mean-free path, instead of this one over here. That will be 3d. So it ended up looking um, pretty. Okay, so let me move this one up here. Can you see that high up? So L is the number of photons that are emitted in all directions per unit time. So if we consider a radius, let's call it Rs, um, inside of which the bubble, um, well, I guess it's the radius of the bubble, inside of which it is completely ionized of the hydrogen. And recombination happens at Rs. So at this point is when uh, the number of photons that you have in your surface uh, it's about enough to uh, kill as many hydrogen atoms as they uh, as recombine. The number of recombinations per volume per unit time Yes, and we said that this one was pretty small, so this is approximately equal to this one. Or did you say RS what again? RS is essentially where recombination happens. Okay. 
the virtual equilibrium with uh, with ionization? Yes. So is the boundary between the H2 and the H1 regions. Okay. Or close to it. It's, it's a little bit beyond that. We can think about it that way. So by doing all the counting, um, you can end up with this. Right, so this is the volume of the sphere. Um, and this is how many, you have N over here because this is the outer part where they are recombining. Um, alpha is the efficiency, and that gives you the, um, the photons that the star is producing per unit time. So, So using the one we got from the uh, boundary conditions of this one, and so for L. Uh, put it in here, and after doing the algebra, you end up with Rs cubed equals three R naught squared divided by sigma n psi. And this sigma n is just d. So this is 3d r not squared divided by the fraction of the surface of the star, the fraction of hydrogens. So you're relating how, what is the um, the fraction of ionizations should be lower and are not. And then D is how far uh, the photons will travel before they find another, well, before they find a, an atom. And RS is the surface of this sphere, right? So, in the observable universe, Rs usually is between 10 and 100 parsecs. Um, the distance between interactions is about 0 0.1 parsecs. And the radius of the star is going to be like in parsecs, I don't know, like I think five zeros. So the star is tiny in, in comparison with the um, ionization sphere that it creates and it's pretty it's 
I mean, it's not completely empty, but it's pretty empty. So uh, photons can travel for a very long time before finding you know, any, anything to interact with. And this is not you know, very different from uh, what the sun does, you know, uh, pushing out the interstellar uh, medium. Not with this particular radiation, but um, you have the solar winds. So you know, maybe uh, stellar systems are bigger than than they look, especially if they can be if they can be a hundred parsecs. Okay, so we can put. Uh, this one in here, so it'll be you know, R cubed over 3D. You see R naught squared over psi of R naught. So then this becomes Was it R the negative one? So both have a 3D, you can put it uh, above, and then this one will be below. This will be 3D R is cubed minus R cubed plus R not cubed. And if you want it to look even prettier than this, you can move the R squared over here. That gives you your psi as a function of the distance from the center of the star. And because R naught is so much smaller than the other two, um, you can, you know, this is going to be essentially zero. Um, well, compared to the other two. So this is the expression that we get for the fraction of ionized uh, hydrogens inside of the sphere, which was our approximation. So this one is Weinberg 3.2.11. So R is going to be, it has to be smaller than RS. Mm, it could be much smaller, uh, but it cannot be too close to RS. Right? If it's too close, then your approximation um, is going to, to break down. So maybe it will work 0.95% you know, of the way to RS. So if R is less than RS, then this term, psi, is going to be of the order of magnitude of D over RS. So your know, typical values will give you 0 0.01 or so. So 
of the uh, hydrogen atoms that you see close to the star uh, are going to be neutral. And the other 99% are going to be ionized um, by the radiation. So since this is small, much smaller than one, um, you know, the, the approximation that we made is correct. Okay, so the other one, the other case that we can make an approximation for Yeah, if you remember the original one, R squared DDR, um, well, And the other approximation is the surface. That's because uh, the region that you can call the, the surface of the of the bubble um, is very small compared to to RS. So then you can. This will be a, a constant, since it's such a small region. This will be Rs squared. This one will be Rs squared two. So you can get rid of that one. Well, approximate out. And so then you have Well, this one's going to be one over D. So for this one, um, there's a change of variable. I'm not gonna go through it, but this is how it looks like. So you have your um, the region that you're calling the the surface. So it's between. Um, R A and R B. Divided by the mean free path. So now the integrals are in terms of psi. The solution to this integral is minus one over psi plus two natural log psi one minus psi evaluated from psi a to psi b.
So here, psi is not necessarily um, small. This is a substantial number. And you have this one over here too. So it's going to be pretty, um, it's going to change very rapidly from being almost zero to being something substantial to being um, close to one as RB and RA lies further away uh, from RS. Okay, so. If you remember the emission, it's a function of uh, frequency and um, path or position, was uh, the energy, H nu, the shape. and the Einstein coefficient times the density. This was a rate of number per unit time. And this one is a number per volume. So this is the number of the combinations. So we can rewrite this as now n is a function of uh, of s. We have the uh, ionization fraction squared, and from these you get your, your emission uh, lines. All right, so next time we will see how this heats up the cloud and how the cloud, you know, the dust or the, the cloud of hydrogen uh, can lose energy. So uh, questions, comments, anything? I personally have none. Okay, thanks. No? No? The homework today, you know, do today is easy, so you should check it out. All right? See you later then. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you Thursday. See you. Bye.